What if the iconic image of Brachiosaurus holding its neck straight up like a giraffe might not tell the whole story? Scientists are discovering these giants may have used their necks more like horizontal cranes, sweeping side to side to clear entire forest canopies without wasting energy fighting gravity. This possibility challenges what we thought we knew about how these creatures lived and fed. Their high browsing feeding strategy allowed them to reach heights up to 30 feet, accessing vegetation unavailable to other herbivores and fundamentally reshaping forest structure. The implications reveal how they functioned as living landscape architects, but this feeding lifestyle created an even more daunting challenge that required extraordinary biological solutions. How does a creature pump blood 40 feet straight up without passing out every time it lifts its head? This engineering challenge would have crushed any normal mammalian heart within seconds. The physics alone make it seem impossible. Giraffes maintain systolic blood pressures of 280 ya 180 mimia yars to reach their heads seven feet above their hearts. But for Brachiosaurus, the distance was six times greater, demanding a cardiovascular system that operated under conditions no modern land animal has ever faced. A typical mammalian heart would have catastrophically failed at this task, causing immediate brain death as blood pressure dropped to zero the moment the animal raised its massive skull. The creature needed something far more powerful than conventional biology could provide. Enter the massive heart, a biological powerhouse that may have weighed as much as 880 pounds and generated pressures that would have ruptured the blood vessels of smaller animals instantly. This enormous organ functioned through a sophisticated hydraulic system that required exceptional engineering. The theoretical demands suggest a network of specialized valves throughout the arterial system to prevent the catastrophic backflow that would have drained blood from the brain during head movements. Each valve would have operated with mechanical precision, maintaining the upward flow against gravity's relentless pull downward. The arterial walls themselves represented another marvel of biological engineering. These specialized vessels possessed structural properties that exceeded the pressures found in deep sea environments where water pressure can crush submarines. The walls needed to contain pressures far beyond anything a giraffe experiences, despite giraffes already operating at extreme cardiovascular limits. Modern industrial hydraulic systems require massive power sources to generate the forces this creature's heart produced continuously. The biological pump operated at pressures that would power construction equipment, yet it did so within living tissue that needed to remain flexible and self-repairing. The heart's chambers expanded and contracted with enough force to move blood through arteries that stretched the length of a four-story building. This cardiovascular engineering enabled the high browsing lifestyle that defined their ecological dominance, allowing access to food sources at heights of 30 feet, completely unavailable to ground level herbivores. Yet this circulatory marvel was just one piece of a larger puzzle because moving all that blood meant nothing if the creature's massive frame could not support itself. The skeletal framework itself represented an engineering marvel that defied conventional physics. What if the most massive land animals in history were actually lighter than they appeared built like living hot air balloons? The paradox of how 33 to 55 ton animals could move efficiently without collapsing under their own weight challenged everything we understand about physics and biology. These creatures faced an impossible engineering challenge that would have crushed any conventional skeletal design. Solid bones would have made these giants immobile prisoners of their own mass. The weight alone would have anchored them to the ground like living monuments, unable to lift their legs or swing their necks. Instead, Brachiosaurus developed an intricate air sac system that honeycomb structured their bones with up to 60% hollow space. Their vertebrae became architectural marvels with some specimens in brachiosaurids like Sora Poseidon reaching 89% air by volume while maintaining structural integrity. These pneumatic chambers functioned like aircraft engineering, maximizing strength 
while minimizing weight through strategic placement of air-filled spaces. The hollow regions occupied areas of minimal stress, concentrating the remaining bone material along load-bearing surfaces where it was actually needed. Thin, bony struts and internal supports created a lattice framework that distributed forces evenly across the entire structure. The avian style respiratory system, similar to modern birds, pumped air through bones like a biological ventilation network. Pneumatic diverticula extended throughout the skeleton, creating interconnected chambers that allowed airflow to reach every hollow space. This network operated continuously, maintaining pressure and circulation through ducts that connected each air-filled cavity. The air circulation system doubled as a cooling mechanism for their massive internal furnaces. The constant airflow helped dissipate heat generated by their enormous metabolisms, preventing the overheating that would have been fatal for creatures of such tremendous size. The moving air also provided shock absorption with adjacent pneumatic diverticula connected by ducts that behaved like shock absorbers, buffering oscillations and torque of the long neck during walking. This weight reduction enabled their crane like feeding strategy, allowing necks to sweep horizontally across vast areas without the crushing weight that would have limited their range of motion. Their elevated position granted them access to feeding heights no other land animal could achieve while simultaneously providing them with commanding views across their territory. This towering perspective transformed these creatures into ecosystem engineers whose influence extended far beyond their massive footprints. Brachiosaurus served as both sentinel and sculptor of their Jurassic world, wielding landscape shaping power through sheer physical presence and feeding behavior that devastated forest structure across the Morrison Formation. Their crane-like feeding strategy allowed horizontal neck sweeps that cleared vegetation from heights exceeding 30 feet off the ground, with most feeding occurring above 16 feet where other herbivores could not reach. A single Brachiosaurus could strip foliage from areas spanning dozens of yards in a single feeding session, consuming an estimated 440 to 880 pounds of plant matter daily. Their diet consisted primarily of ginkgos, conifers, tree ferns, and large cycads removing branches, leaves, and young trees with methodical precision that created dramatic openings in previously dense forest canopies. From their elevated position, these creatures gained crucial survival advantages through their biological watchtower capabilities. Their heads scanned horizons that remained invisible to shorter animals, providing early detection of approaching threats across vast distances. This height advantage made ambush strategies nearly impossible for hunting theropods, though Brachiosaurus was actually much less common in its ecosystem than related species and ranked among the less abundant Morrison formation sauropods. The selective high browsing created cascading light gaps that transformed understory plant communities in ways that persisted long after the giants moved on. Areas once dominated by shade tolerant species suddenly received direct sunlight triggering dramatic shifts in vegetation composition. These feeding patterns influenced the evolution of contemporary plant species forcing adaptations to browsing pressure at unprecedented heights. As Brachiosaurus shared its habitat in the Morrison Formation with many other sauropod species, its specialization for feeding at greater heights formed part of a system of niche partitioning with various taxa avoiding direct competition with each other. Species like Diplodocus and Camarasaurus were relegated to feeding at lower levels, allowing for greater biodiversity within herbivore communities as different species specialized in exploiting distinct vertical zones of available vegetation. These gentle giants wielded more landscape shaping power than any predator through pure reach and appetite, transforming entire forest ecosystems with each feeding sweep. Yet even their tremendous size and ecological dominance would face the ultimate test when confronted by the most formidable predators of their era. The Morrison Formation's apex predator, Allosaurus, presented a formidable challenge, 
with its razor sharp teeth and powerful build. Yet even this dominant theropod faced an opponent that operated on an entirely different scale of existence. Could the most fearsome jaws of the late Jurassic actually threaten a walking mountain of muscle and bone? The confrontation between Allosaurus and Brachiosaurus represented one of nature's most dramatic size mismatches, where predatory prowess met overwhelming physical scale. The geometric scaling made the theropod appear dwarf like beside these titans. A mature Brachiosaurus reached lengths of 60 to 72 feet and weighed between 31 and 52 tons, making even the largest Allosaurus seem relatively small and potentially vulnerable when facing such a giant. The sauropod's massive frame created a situation where direct combat became highly disadvantageous for the smaller predator, regardless of bite force capabilities. The physics of tail whip strikes generated forces that exceeded modern vehicle crashes. When an 80,000 pound animal swung its muscular tail, the kinetic energy transferred through impact could deliver devastating blows capable of breaking bones and causing internal injuries that no amount of predatory skill could compensate for. The tail functioned as a biological wrecking ball sweeping across areas with enough force to topple trees. A single footstep from Brachiosaurus delivered more crushing force than the predator's entire body weight. The sheer mass of dozens of tons concentrated into footprints meant that any direct impact would be devastating, making the ground itself a weapon. This passive defense transformed simple movement into a potentially lethal threat for any creature unfortunate enough to be underneath. Brachiosaurus was unsuited for rearing on its hind limbs due to stability problems, limiting its defensive options to horizontal sweeps and coordinated herd movements. Herds created impenetrable walls of flesh around vulnerable juveniles through coordinated movement strategies. This mobile fortress approach compensated for their inability to directly brood eggs due to crushing weight, ensuring protection through collective defense rather than individual parental care. These titans protected their lineage through coordinated movement rather than individual combat, demonstrating how nature's most successful solutions often emerge from the intersection of physical constraints and evolutionary innovation. The late Jurassic Morrison formation witnessed biological engineering that redefined the boundaries between physics and evolution. Though many aspects of Brachiosaurus biology remain subjects of ongoing scientific research rather than definitively solve puzzles. Their pneumatic bones, hydraulic hearts, and coordinated defense strategies represented solutions that modern engineers still struggle to replicate. Their legacy continues in modern ecosystems where size cooperation and specialized anatomy still determine survival outcomes across species. The next time you see a giraffe stretching toward acacia, branches, or watch birds soaring effortlessly through thermal currents, remember you're witnessing echoes of the innovations that once made giants walk the earth. These creatures transformed biological impossibilities into evolutionary advantages that lasted millions of years.